Hi everyone, this is David Mitchell. If you told me 25 years ago the influence that my message of the Psalter would have, I might not have believed you. There was a time when it was out of print, from about 2010 to 2017, and copies were selling for $2,999.99. I'm afraid I don't have any evidence of that highest price, but here's a fairly recent one from October 2022, still selling for $1,993.99. Let me tell you a bit about the message of the Psalter and why it is so sought after. The key issue I addressed in my book is this. Is the book of Psalms just a jumbled collection of ancient Israelite religious lyrics, or does it have a secret message encoded within it? In the message of the Psalter, I argue that it has. Throughout much of the last three centuries, the standard view was that the Psalms were just an unplanned anthology of lyrics, that they had no particular message. But slowly, from the 1980s on, that view began to change. Klaus Westermann pointed out links between pairs of Psalms. Walter Brueggemann showed how the whole book features a progression from lament to praise. And G. H. Wilson showed that the titles of the Psalms were an original part of them. That helped Wilson to find a structure in the book. He said that there's a story running through the book, and the story is about the fall of the house of David. It describes the collapse of David's house, and it says Israel must no longer trust in David, but in God alone. And Wilson said the book of Psalms was an oratorio, just like Mendelssohn's Elijah, he said. That's where I entered the story. I could see too that the Psalms were a structured collection. This wasn't just because of Wilson, Westermann and Brueggemann. It was because I could see that the Songs of Ascents were a highly structured collection, and I couldn't imagine that the rest of the Psalms were just unstructured. However, when Wilson said that the Psalms were about the end of the House of David, I said that was impossible. You see, the sages of Israel never said the House of David is finished. They all said, David's son, the Messiah, is coming. And when I looked at the narrative of the book of Psalms, I saw exactly the same thing. There is an underlying story, a meta-narrative, which leans on the prophets, especially Zechariah. And this story moves through a sequence of troubles and reverses until the appearance of a hero figure, a bridegroom Messiah, who comes to gather Israel. But then, like Joseph, he is rejected and he suffers in Psalms 88 and 89. And then again in Psalm 110, he appears from the heavens to sit on David's throne on Zion, to gather and save Israel and to receive the homage of all nations. So I agreed with Wilson that the book of Psalms is an oratorio, but contrary to Wilson, I say it is not Elijah, it is Messiah. Well, I won't spoil the surprises for you. Let's just say that the hypothesis I outlined in this book has since become the dominant theory for the theology and structure of the book of Psalms. If you want to know more, it's best you read it for yourself. In fact, you can now get the hardback for $29.99 instead of $2,999.99. And there's a whole 160,000 words of it, so you'll get your money's worth. I hope you like it. God bless.